The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, on this day you open the way of eternal life to every race and nation by the promised gift of your Holy Spirit. Shed abroad this gift throughout the world by the preaching of the gospel, that it may reach to the ends of the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, the disciples were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and parts of the Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are all filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. I say, indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter to the Corinthians. No one can say Jesus is Lord except the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given the Spirit of utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of the spirits to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit, we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When it was evening on that first day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If this gospel seems familiar, if you feel like you heard that somewhere not too long ago, you're right. It was seven-ish weeks ago, we heard this exact same gospel, plus a bit, about half as much again more. Right? This is the same gospel that we read on the second Sunday of Easter, uh, April 16th. We read this gospel plus the bit that comes after it, which is, but Thomas was not with them, and they told him about it, and he said, nah, didn't happen. Uh, but 
we're hearing this story again for a reason, right? We've, we've, after we heard about Thomas, and we focused quite a bit on Thomas, because that's the bit we hear last in that story, uh, we go back through much of John's gospel through the rest of Easter. Uh, we talk about shepherds, and then we go on to the farewell discourse, and we stick with the farewell discourse for a number of weeks. And we're, the goal is that we are rehearing the farewell discourse. We're hearing it again in light of the resurrection, thinking about what Jesus meant along with the disciples after the resurrection, how they prepared themselves. And then we come again to this day on the first day of the week that is the day of the resurrection when the doors were locked and Jesus appears among the disciples and says peace be with you and having thought about everything that Jesus taught in the light of the resurrection for these last several weeks we hear something new we don't think we don't talk about Thomas because we don't want to think about Thomas today we want to think about the first part particularly that bit at the end Jesus breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. The sins that you forgive on earth are forgiven in heaven. The sins that you bind on earth are bound in heaven. This morning's collect, and indeed many things throughout the prayer book, speak about the gift of the Spirit. And for Jesus in this gospel this morning, it is his breath, his essential nature, the thing that gives him life in the resurrection that he breathes on to the disciples as a gift. Whether they are ready for it or not, whether they wanted it or not. And it is one of those gifts that seems like something sometimes other than a gift. It's kind of like when I got married. And one of my relatives at my wedding um, said, see that box? This is at the reception during the dancing and the frivolity and all that. And there's a great big box sitting by the present table at the wedding. I said, yeah, I see the box. And she said, that box is for you. Not for the two of you, for you. It's a gift for you. I know your birthday's coming up, so it's kind of a combination gift. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Uh, and so, like many people do nowadays, uh, we had the day after the wedding, uh, a present opening party uh, gathering. And uh, when we got to that great big box, which we kind of saved for the end, because, you know, big box, big thing, uh, you want to build up to it. Uh, I opened it, and there was a card with it that said, remember, this is for you, Jed, mostly. And then we took, uh, and I let my wife tear off the wrapping paper because, you know, newlyweds, all that good stuff. Um, and it was a vacuum cleaner. And someone in the back, I don't remember who, uh, at this at this gathering remark, you know, that vacuum cleaner doesn't seem so much like a gift as a job description. The Holy Spirit's a little bit like that vacuum cleaner in some ways. It is a gift. It is given freely. God gives it to us. God gives, Jesus gives the Spirit, the life-giving breath of God, the same breath that innervated molds of clay and made them the first human beings. Jesus gives that breath to the disciples as a gift and then says go and forgive sins go and bind sins go out into the world with this spirit within you almost as if this gift also comes with responsibilities with a job description Maybe a little bit less troublesome than giving a puppy as a gift, but maybe not. And it's not exclusive, this gift. It's not just for them, because when we tell this story again, 
when the Spirit intervenes, when the living breath of God swirls in again with the disciples on that day, the day of Pentecost, the day that we celebrate this morning, 50 days after the resurrection, it is not just those 11 who are cowering in the room. It is a big gathering of the disciples, not just the 11, but the, the larger crowd that had followed Jesus. Maybe as many as the 72 in Luke's gospel that Jesus commissioned to go ahead of him. And it is this group on, to which the Spirit comes like a whirlwind, like fire. The wind driven by fire. If you've ever been near a forest fire, you know that a wildfire, you know, that, that fire, the fire of that size creates its own weather systems. Creates its own clouds and wind and thunderstorms and sometimes even tornadoes. The Spirit comes in like its own pyroclastic tornado. And alights on all of Jesus' followers in that place. And how dislocating must that have felt? Right, one minute you're together praying, talking about what God is doing, about, the, about Jesus, about the Spirit even. Um, and it, maybe even someone was like, well, isn't that a little weird that Jesus breathed on you like two months ago? It's a little strange. A month and a half ago. A little, a little odd. What was that all about? And suddenly that same breath, that same ruach, that same life-giving spirit is there in that place and you feel your heart burning within you and suddenly there is a strange language on your tongue. And you don't know why you didn't take Babel. You didn't buy Rosetta Stone. You don't have Duolingo downloaded on your phone. You don't know why you're able to speak, speak Parthian. But you can all of a sudden, and then you start talking about God and speaking about truths about God that you didn't even know that you knew, that, that was buried somewhat deep down in your heart, but has been inflamed and burst into song and proclamation. And you don't know why, all because of the Spirit is within you. Life is within you, bursting forth. That would have been a little bit dislocating. If that happened to me, I would have not known what to do with that. That's sometimes how the Spirit works. When you open yourself up to it, you choose to be open to God, open to the Spirit. The Spirit comes and gives you a gift that looks a lot like a job description of preaching. It looks a lot like turning you from a disciple into an apostle. It looks a lot like pulling you from where God found you into a new place where God can use you, where you can be with God in a new way. Whenever we gather and we pray the Eucharistic prayer, we say, we talk about the history of God's relationship with us. After the Sursum Corda, after the blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, after all that, we start talking about the history of God and us. And we say that God created us and made us stewards of creation. We say it in many different ways, but essentially it comes down to God made us stewards of all that God had made, fellow caretakers, co creators. Of, that, of all of what God had made and declared good. And then it says in every one of our Eucharistic prayers, but we messed it up. But we messed it up. And so God has been slowly but surely repairing that since that moment. And in the Spirit, in this moment, in all of the ways that Paul talks about in his letter to the Corinthians, that the Spirit can give us things to do, can be gifts to us as we are the church in the world. In every one of those ways, the Spirit is 
the culmination of what God has been hoping for us since we were created, since God made us to be those stewards, those caretakers, those co-creators. The Spirit is here to, if we want to, guide us into that fullness. And that's an important caveat. If we want to, if we are willing to, all of those disciples on Pentecost, all of those disciples who have followed Jesus for, for three years who were in that, locked in that upper room remembering Jesus. All of those disciples had opened themselves up to the Holy Spirit. Because our God, if nothing else, is a God of consent. Our God is a God who doesn't want you to worship God because you have to. To love God because there's no other choice. Our God is God who wants to love and be loved because you choose to return that love. Who gives you the spirit and hopes that you will respond in kind. And if you do, if you are the stewards, if we are the stewards that God hopes that we are of this spirit, of this life, of this ruach, if we are willing to go and do as Jesus did with it, which is go and give it away. Go and give it to the world. Go and give life and love to everyone. Go and witness that God is life and love to everyone, and everyone is deserving of that life and love, no, no matter who they are or what language they speak or where they come from or the manner of life they lead, that they are worthy of love and belonging. If we are willing to go out into the world and breathe this life and love into the world, then we will be in that moment what God had in mind for us from the very, very beginning. When God saw what God had made and declared that all of it was very good. Jesus finds his disciples in that place where they are uncertain of what has happened. They've heard stories, but they're still afraid. They know that something is coming, but they're not sure how they're supposed to move on. Jesus appears in the midst of them and says, Receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the life and love of God, unfiltered, unadulterated. And then, if you choose, go out. Breathe on the world as I have breathed on you. Inflame the world as I have inflamed you. Bring the world back to the awareness God's love and care and its goodness in the way that you know that you are of God because I have loved you. Go and do these things with this spirit. People might think you're drunk. Might think that you are speaking nonsense. <laughs> And they will certainly oppose what you are doing, who you stand with, who you stand by, who you stand for. But go and do this, and you will have the Spirit of God, the love of God, the life of God in you, just as I breathe this life into you. Be the steward that God had in mind for you from the very, very beginning. Because this is very good. Amen.
We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was in the heart of the Holy Spirit, the Virgin Mary, and came in through the beginning. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven. He will come in and glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken in the prophets. We believe in one the Holy Catholic. Let us play, pray for the church and for the world. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. We pray for Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, the Church of the Province of the West Indies, Michael, the presiding bishop, the Diocese of Southern Ohio and Springfield, and the Episcopal Covenant for the Care of Creation. For Melissa, the Bishop Provisional, the Bishop's Search Committee, St. Joseph, St. John in Lakewood, and St. Mary's in Lakewood. For this church, for the vestry and all those in leadership, and for Teresa, our intern. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. We pray for Joseph, for Kamala, for Jay, for Terry, Cecile, and Fawn. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours, and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. We pray for those celebrating the anniversary of their birth, especially Chris, Gretchen, Lee, Jed, and Elizabeth. For those celebrating the anniversary of their baptism, especially Jesse. For those celebrating the anniversary of their marriage, especially Katie. For those celebrating the anniversary of their ordination, especially Jed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. We pray especially for Judy, Kathy, Kathy, Jenny, Scott, Sharon, Jean, Ken, Teresa, Mary, 
Jay, Jack, Kitty, Doug, Glenn, Beth Ann, Richard, Fritz, Carol, Jean and Dick, Cordelia, Cleo, Jan, Daisy, and Andy. For Julie and her father. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We commend to you, to your mercy, all who have died, that will you will your that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please be seated for a moment. Welcome to all. We're glad you're here with us this morning, however you are joining us, whether it is on our online stream or here in person. It is wonderful to have you. There are lots of announcements in your bulletin and in the font, our online e-newsletter. Keep an eye on both of those for things that are upcoming in the church. From There are a lot of things that we're hoping to do this summer, so I hope that you'll keep your eye on that. Uh, take it home whenever you get it, uh, put it on whatever communication board or surface or database that you use at home, and that we'll see you uh, again very soon here at the church. Now, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
so that in obedience to you, our Creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us in a covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us yet without sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, to the sorrowful joy. To fulfill your purpose he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave destroyed death, and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world, and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me.
Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread and life, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace, and grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, matriarchs, prophets, apostles, martyrs, and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your will be done. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May Almighty God, who enlightened the minds of the disciples by the pouring out upon them of the Holy Spirit, make you rich with his blessing, that you may abound more and more in that spirit forever. Amen. May God, who sent the Holy Spirit as a flame of fire that rested upon the heads of the disciples, burn out all the evil from your hearts and make them shine with the pure light of his presence. Amen. May God, who by the Holy Spirit caused those of many tongues to proclaim Jesus as Lord, strengthen your faith and send you out to bear the witness to him in word and deed. Amen. And God's blessing be with you, Christ's peace be with you, the Spirit's outpouring be with you now and always. Amen. Rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. 